All right, this is our last section in uh, chapter four. So 4.5 is exponential growth and decay and modeling data. So we're gonna model uh, exponential growth and decay, uh, use logistics growth models, and express an exponential uh, model in base E. <coughs> so we'll see if we can't figure this stuff out. First thing we need to talk about is uh, basically exponential growth and decay. So the models kind of look uh, like this. So F of T is equal to A sub O, e to the kt power, where a is equal to a sub o e to the kt power, where if k is greater than zero, uh, the function models the amount or size of uh, the growing entity. a sub 1 is the original amount or size of the growing entity uh, at time zero, and a is the amount of time. k is the constant representing the growth rate. However, if your growth rate is less than zero, or basically negative, the function models decay. So A sub O is the original amount, uh, decay uh, entity at time t is equal to zero, and A is the amount at time t, k is the constant representing decay rate. And you can see your exponential growth looks a little bit like this, your exponential decay looks a little bit like that. So we have studied um, exponential functions when we're graphing before, and as you can see, uh, you have a positive coefficient looks like this, negative coefficient will reflect you about the y-axis, so that's why it looks a little bit something like that. So, uh, things you really need to take away from this is k is a constant. And a lot of times what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find that constant. a sub o is the original amount, so uh, it's, it's important that you understand that that's what uh, you're going to get whenever uh, t is zero. And then a is actually going to be what you have after a certain amount of time. So kind of keep that in mind because sometimes it's in relationship to A sub O. So let's see if we can't look at this. Uh, you can read the little text above the example. It says sometimes we need uh, to use given data to determine K, the growth rate or decay rate. After we compute this value for K, we can use the formula A equals A sub O E to the KT power to make predictions. So that's kind of what people get paid to do is to notice trends in math trends and what's going on in the real world and then use that information to help us predict in the future. So it says modeling the growth of the US population. The graph in figure 4.22 shows the US population millions for five selected years from 1970 to 2007. In 1970 the US population was two, uh, 203 decimal 3 million. By 2007 it had grown to 300.9 million. So one important thing to realize is what your units are and your problems. So since we're talking about in terms of millions, realize when we get our answer, it's going to be in terms of millions. So what we're going to do is we're going to find an exponential growth function that models the data for 1970-2007. So we got a little work to do. Here we go. First thing we do is we're going to start with our function. So we'll say a is equal to a sub o e to the kt power. Now, as you can see, right now in our problem, we have one, two, three, four different variables. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to plug in for three of those so that we can find our fourth. Well, the first thing we need to do is figure out what information we know. Well, right now, the only thing they tell us is what the U.S. population is in 1970 was this, and the population in 2007 is this. And since we're trying to start this uh, model, for the years uh, 1970, that's actually going to be our A sub O. So it's going to be our original population. So in the year 1970, whoops, you can't see that, you're going to get uh, T to be zero. And then in 2007, we basically need to do that in relationship to how many years it would be. So if I'm doing my math right, I think it would be 37. So we're going to kind of use that information. Uh, a sub O, what we're going to plug in for A sub O is our population at the beginning, which is 1970, which in this case will be 203.3. For A, what we're going to do is use the population uh, in the year 2007. So 300.9. And then the rest of the stuff E, of course, is, a, is an irrational number, so it's actually a, a constant, kind of like pi. And then K, we're going to need to find K, but we do know our T value. So our T value we found to be 37. 
So it's important to know a sub o and then basically plug in some other thing we know so that we can find k. That's what we're really trying to do and then we're going to use that to help us predict. So I'm going to divide. And remember to make sure that you're showing your work on these problems. I know a lot of this can be done in the calculator, but uh, when I'm grading this, you need to uh, make sure you show your work. So next I'm going to just take the natural log of both sides. That will cancel. So I'll get, I'm going to switch this up to, I'll put 37k equal to the natural log and I'll divide by so that's about 37 all right so now it becomes a little calculator problem so let's see if my bad boy will turn on yeah look at that so let's say natural log of 300 decimal 9 divided by 203.3 and then we're going to divide that by 37. Alright, so that's what I got for my nice little K. Now realize I want it to be as exact as possible. So even though I may write a decimal up on the board, I'm really going to use this number. So I'll go back to my calculator, hopefully it'll turn on, and uh, actually use that decimal. So we'll see how it works. Uh, I forgot what the decimal was. 0105. All right. So now we know what k is. So what we can do is we can go back and we can plug back into our model. So we'll say a is equal to our original mount won't change. So we'll still use this for our original mount. And it'll be e to the decimal 0105. Again, that's not exact. It's a rounded value times t. And then what we're trying to do is figure out when will the US population reach 315 million? So now we're going to use this same formula that we actually created to help us find out what it will be in the future. So this time we'll say 315 so I will first go ahead and divide both sides to solve This is going to cancel. I would really like to do this one step, but I'm trying to show my work for you guys. Whoops. I'll take the natural log of both sides. That's going to cancel, and I'm going to divide both sides by this. Now remember that answer is actually still on my calculator, hopefully, yep. So I'm going to actually use that, so I'll say the natural log of uh, this divided by, and then divided by the answer. So that'll give me a pretty exact value. So I'm going to say roughly 41.3 years. Alright, so uh, that's great, but what I'm actually going to try to do is see what actual year that will be. So again, I'll go back and say, well, I've got 270 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 270, and uh, I need to figure out, um, yeah, if you add 41 years to that. So obviously I can just take this and add to it apparently uh, four years. So if you take 2007 and add to it four years, Looks like it actually occurred in the year uh, 2011. So in the year uh, 2011, apparently the United States population was 315 million. Now, that doesn't mean that that's necessarily true. Um, you know, probably when this book was written, they didn't know what the population was. We could go and check it and see how accurate it is. Or, um, you know, you could actually re, uh, redo this formula so that it's more applicable since we actually know the populations from, 
you know, from 2007 till pretty much the current year. They don't take the U.S. population every year, but uh, we could use that information and help us predict what it'll be in, you know, how long it'll take for us to reach 400 million.